Yo, what's good, YouTube man? It's Gabe, which is on the Fan TV. Back at you, man. If you like the content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Let the content in this channel, man. Go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Look, what's going on, Ravens flock, man? Hope y'all had a great, great, wonderful holiday, things like that. Obviously, New Year's still coming around, so we're still technically in the holiday season. But hope you had a great Christmas, all right? But we got to talk about something from this Falcons game that's been a problem for a long time for the Ravens, pretty much this entire season. The Ravens have a fatal flaw, okay? And watching the game, it should be obvious, but if you know, if you don't know, then obviously we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit here, okay? The Ravens have a fatal flaw. The Ravens are ranked 30th in red zone touchdown percentage. 30th in the NFL, okay? So, who are the bottom five teams in red zone touchdown percentage? Jets and the Texans, okay? Jets are decent, but Texans come on fight for draft, five, draft, draft slot, excuse me. Ravens at 30, um, Colts at 31, Patriots at 32. All right, that's not the kind of company you want to be around. And that's what the kind of company the Ravens are around right now when it comes to scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Now, the Ravens get there. They get there a lot, okay? But the issue is they don't convert that three to seven. They don't, they don't do that, right? Now, obviously, sometimes they even go for one fourth down. That doesn't even work out for them, okay? Um, now, for the playoffs, that fatal flaw is going to cost them a game. That cannot happen. If the Ravens get down and close, they got to take more of these chances, right? They got to punch the ball in the end zone. Simple as that. Um, a power run team shouldn't struggle with the concept of getting the ball in the end zone down close. Um, this team's identity is obviously built off of running the ball, uh, having big physical players on the field. But yet, time and time again, when they get into the red zone, they got to settle for three points. That's a major issue. That's the kind of flaw where if you take too many field goals, you'll lose. We've seen it. I, I, I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen Ravens game in the past. When I think it was in 2011 when they played the Colts and that game was won all field goals. The Ravens turned some of those into touchdowns. It's a different game, right? So now here we are in 2022. The same thing still applies, man. Things don't change too much in the NFL. You got to score touchdowns when you get down close into the red zone, all right? Now, Something that I thought was interesting is the fact that um, during the Falcons game, the broadcast said that um, with Lamar Jackson, the Ravens are 51% in the red zone for scoring touchdowns. Without Lamar Jackson, they're 29%, right? So now 51 isn't great because the top teams in the league are still around between like 66 and 70. But the drop all the way to 29 shows the major impact Lamar Jackson has on this team, right? But even with Lamar, so especially with Lamar Jackson, I have to say 51% is just not going to cut it. They have to be way higher than that. Um, this is the kind of thing, like I said repeatedly, man. You don't if you turn, um, if you keep taking three points instead of getting seven points, it's going to kill you, right? And right now, you know the Ravens are matched up with teams like, um, I think the Jaguars right now is the four or five matchup, right? Uh, Jaguars have a pretty good offense, right? We've seen them play us already. We've seen them come back and beat us. If we don't convert in the red zone like we didn't, like like we didn't do when we played them. We could lose, right? Um, who else, right? If the Ravens end up getting a three seed, because that's probably the seed they're going to be sliding into, the Chargers are right there. And the Ravens don't want to play the Chargers uh, happen to go touchdowns with field goals, right? The Chargers, Mike Williams is back healthy. Keenan, uh, Keenan Allen is back healthy. Austin Eckler has been there pretty much the entire season. And Justin Herbert is um, a really good young quarterback, right? So the Ravens must find a way to fix this, okay? And just, just to prove that red zone touchdown percentage is very, very important, here are the top 10 teams, okay? So this is from 10 to 1. So 10th is the Dolphins, then it's the Bills, Giants, Vikings, Bengals, Chiefs. Tied for third is the Titans and the Lions. Second is the Cowboys. First is the Eagles, all right? Every, every one of those 10 teams I just named are either in the playoffs or fighting for a playoff spot, all right? Um, so we, we can see some elite teams in here. Okay, Bills, Bengals, Chiefs, Cowboys, Eagles, Vikings. Vikings are, what, 12-3 and three now, something like that. So five out of ten are elite teams. So this goes to show that, no, this stat isn't just some, you know, uh, fluky stat or something like that. This, this, this means something. Good teams get down in close and turn three into seven constantly. They don't let they don't they don't keep saying they feel we'll kick out there on the field. And don't get me wrong, Justin Tucker's all time great. This really has nothing to do with Justin Tucker. It's just a simple fact. The Ravens should be able to punch the ball in the end zone when they get down close. 
and they haven't been able to do it this entire season. Okay. Now, um, we can't just talk about the complaint and not give reasons or not not give reasons, but say what can be done, what can be changed, right? If they do these couple of things, maybe that it can flip up and we can change into a good red zone offense going into the playoffs, right? Now it's not gonna be anything that's happened a miracle overnight, obviously. I mean, we we had, we just late in the season that and it hasn't happened, but these are my suggestions, okay? Now, one, commit to the run game in the red zone. It seems like sometimes that the run game gets going and, and for whatever reason, kind of fall away from it. Sometimes in close, um, you know, Patrick Ricard is here to block. Get Oliver out there like him uh, having on hand to block and Nick Ball. You know, get these guys out there and really commit to getting the ball in the end zone, right? Uh, Patrick Ricard had that fourth and one uh, versus Steelers that he didn't convert. I Me mean, personally, I would like to see Patrick Ricard blocking and have Gus Edwards run the ball right there. And I think they get it. All right, I think that was versus the, uh, the Browns, excuse me. So, with that being said, commit to the run a little bit more, right? You already love to run the ball in the red zone. Let's just commit to it a little bit more, all right? Now, if the run is not working, I think what we saw last week is the major factor right here. Back shoulder jump balls, right? Now, this is something that the Ravens talked about pretty much all training camp, right? I mean, I remember them seeing highlight videos of Duvernay and Bateman catching all kinds of back shoulder passes from Lamar Jackson. Right, just to come to the season, and we rarely see it if ever. Right now, last week we saw something with Demarcus Robinson. Tyler Huntley gave Demarcus Robinson a chance to go get it. Now, listen, this had nothing to do with Tyler Huntley versus Lamar Jackson. I think that was a design call. So now, if you feel comfortable to say, "Hey, look, I will give a jump ball to Demarcus Robinson," right? Let's give it to Mark Andrews. Let's give it to Isaiah Likely. Mark Andrews is starting to be split out wide. He's starting to be isolated out there at wide receiver. So why can't Mark Andrews get a back shoulder, get a jump ball? Isaiah likely was making plays all training camp. He's been making plays sometimes this season when he's been given the opportunity. That's what needs to change. you got to be able to take advantage of mismatches, right? You love these tight ends. You have two phenomenally athletic tight ends. I mean, all of us are athletic tight ends as well, don't get me wrong. But mainly talking about Andrews and Lightly. You have two guys who are supremely athletic. And I'm not saying they're going to win every matchup against the corner. You don't win 100% of the jump balls, 100% of the back shoulders. But for something that was talked about so much during the offseason, for us not to see it at all until like really this last week right here, it's not good, right? And when they did it, it worked. So let's see it again. Lamar Jackson can throw a back shoulder. I've seen him do it. Um, and he can throw a jump ball, right? Most quarterbacks can throw a jump ball, okay? So that's my second, um, I guess, suggestion, right? And my, my third one is, this is kind of a really in close, but um, it's the shovel pass, man. The shovel pass is a creative way. You see the Chiefs do it all the time. They ran out of 100 different formations. They never really repeated it uh, again. Uh, I think Brett Coleman did a video about uh, the Chiefs and their shovel pass and how they how effective it is down close and stuff like that. Um, good offensive coordinators steal from other teams, right? That's just what the fact of it is. Now, with that being said, the Ravens have run the shovel pass multiple times this year. They did it earlier in the year in close. I think it was versus the Bengals. Uh, Might have been uh, one versus the Patriots as well. But this this is week three, week five of the season, okay? Um, they just did one of Justice Hill that was like a third and 18. and ended up getting like 20 yards, right? That wasn't in the red zone. But still, that this is a play where if, you know, designed correctly and disguised correctly, can be supremely effective. That's what I would like to see, right? So these are my three suggestions for the Ravens in the red zone, okay? Commit to the run a little bit more. If that is not working, number two is jump ball, back shoulder plays. You've been talking about it all off season, and we rarely, rarely see it during the regular season. So let's that work you put in. Let's see. Uh, let's see the fruits of that labor, okay? And third, the shovel pass, right? Get creative with it. Run out of different formation. Run out of different sets. Roman, I know you got a million different sets that that, that look like a run. Have one of them be a shovel pass, okay? Um, so those are my suggestions. If you guys got any other suggestions for what the Ravens can do in the red zone, let me know. But that's just my idea, man. The Ravens have a fatal flaw, and that's scoring touchdowns in the red zone. If they don't correct that issue, um, they're going to get bounced from the playoffs. Simple as that. Good team score touchdowns in the red zone. Flat out. Can't say it any more clearer than that, man. But anyway, man, I'm going to get out of here. Y'all have a beautiful, beautiful day. It's your boy Gabriel. Turn on the fan TV. I'm out.